So some of you all may know already um, that for my, my father, myself, even some my son, uh, and a little bit my daughter, we have, I, I believe it's allergic-induced asthma. And that's, I believe, one of the worst feelings that you can ever have. You can't get your breath. Actually, Billy's mom is in the hospital right now. She's having trouble breathing. And so can we pray for her really quick? Yes, Father, we, we lift up Pamela to you. Father, touch her body, touch her lungs, encourage her heart. Lord, help her not worry. Give her peace, Father. Touch her body. Send ministering angels to, to help minister to her, even now in Jesus' name. Amen. But dealing with asthma is, is tough. I've probably been to the emergency room at least three or four times, having a hard time catching my breath. And actually, even our son, since we moved here around 2016, was in the emergency room. But the, the, just when you can't breathe, you can't catch your breath, it's like you're, you're agonizing to catch your breath. You're fighting. And as in my study this week, there was a word that Jude used. He said to contend for the faith. And actually, from the Greek, the word contend means to agonize, to exert energy. It's, a, it's, a, it's an athlete's term of, of athletes that were to, to agonize and to compete, to win the battle, to win in Jude, it seems like that's an overkill, but it's not. God wants us to agonize and to exert energy to fight for our faith. Can I get an amen? It's that serious. In these days, we need to be alert. As Miss Alicia was alerting to, alluding to, there's many believers that are falling away, that are walking away from the faith now. And it's, I think it's one of the saddest things. So we need to be in prayer for our fellow believers. Amen? And this is one thing. We've been in a series called The Dimensions of Faith. I used to believe that faith was just one-dimensional. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's part of it. That's one description, but it's not it. I believe as we understand faith more, we'll be able to put to practice that scripture. In every circumstance, take up the shield of faith. And God wants to teach us that. One of the things about faith is faith isn't static. We need to nurture it. Just like in this scripture in Jude, it says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy, holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus that leads to eternal life. Build yourself, yourselves up in your most holy faith. Actually, I put the wrong scripture there. The scripture I'm looking for, is, it's in Jude. It talks about we need to contend or agonize to defend our faith. So I had two examples. So initially, she helps to come tutor our kids for homeschooling. And one of the assignments that uh, initially had an idea to get the kids plants and teach them um, how to keep their plants alive. And not all of my kids have followed instructions. I have. Lizzie's plants, <laughs> Lizzie's plants are alive and doing well, but this is this poor plant right here. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I mean, it looked good at the beginning, but it ain't looking too good now. Remember those hot spells? It was so hot outside, and it wasn't getting enough water. But I believe this is a picture 
of how we need to nurture our faith and how we need to protect our faith. It's not static. It's not static. We can't just send it and forget it. We have to agonize and fight for it. Not only fight for our faith, but fight for the faith of other people. Because the enemy, he's coming to steal and kill and destroy. But we have all the tools we need to defeat him. Can I get an amen? amen? And one way that we can agonize to contend for the faith is to prayer. Prayer. Oh, man. So, I used to run track. And, you know, I was really fast. You hear me? I was probably the third fastest guy or second fastest guy in high school. From Miami, Florida. I think, you know, from Florida, we those guys are fast because we run for the police all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I had some wheels. I could run. I could leap over fences and everything. The hurdles. But one of the things, before we went to the track meet, and probably with other sports, they'd have us load up on pasta. Load up. And I don't know all the stuff that deals with that, but it helps you function in your race. And what we need to load up on as we run this race called life, we need to load up on prayer. Prayer is a tool it's not only a tool, it's a lifestyle. In, in, in the garden, in the beginning, there is unsevered communication with the Father. Unsevered. And now our means to have communion with the Father is through prayer. And when we pray, it helps to defend and nurture our faith. So we need to load up on so here are some of the dimensions that we've already talked about. The first dimension we talked about of faith is faith is the entrance to salvation. We're saved by grace, by grace through faith. So that means if you take the analogy of needing to get a certain place and you have a vehicle to get there, a car, Grace is a picture of that car, but you need to get in the car in order to have the benefits of it, right? You need to get in, and the grace will take you. So faith is the entrance of our salvation. The next thing we talked about is faith is based on God's word. So faith isn't I think it up in my head and I just do what I want to do. Faith is based on God's word, on God's rhema word and logos word. I told this, I probably shared this illustration three, three weeks in a row, but I heard of this guy who tried to walk on water and almost drown. Well, if God really told him to walk on water, he, would, he wouldn't almost drown. We need to make sure when we're doing something, it's God that's actually telling us to do it. Faith is based on God's word. For we walk by faith, not by sight. The next dimension that we talked about last week is faith is completed by acting on God's word. So we it's not enough just to believe if we don't act on it. It says to James that you know, demons, even the demons believe, but they don't have a good relationship with Jesus, do they? Because they're not acting on God's word, so we have to act on his, on his word. And the dimension that we're going to talk about today is faith is strengthened through prayer. One of my favorite passages about prayer in the Bible is in Matthew 26, 30-46. And it says, and when they had sang a hymn, this is right after communion, and when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, 
Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And then another part of the scripture, you know what it says? The, the, Jesus told Peter, the enemy wants to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith doesn't fail. So in this passage, it's so interesting. Have you, your parents ever tell you something? He's like, hey, warn you about something. He's like, oh, it's all right. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. But one day, this is just a short story. I'll tell you about some of LT's past. I'm not proud of it, but so one day I'm, you know, I'm taking a taking a bath and I'm I'm listening to some of that hardcore rap music. <laughs> hardcore. And um oh yeah. I'm not even gonna share the what it was hardcore. My mom walked in there, she's like, Hey son, do you know that demonic spirits is on that music? You need to stop listening to that music. And then I find out years later, when people in games and stuff, when they're about to go out and do something really bad, they listen to that music to get them pumped up. Definitely. But my mom tried to warn me about music. And about the influence that it can have. It's, it, it's, it's so dangerous. I mean, you, some of this music is casting a spell over our generation, over our kids. She warned me. And Jesus, in this passage, is going to warn Peter. This is, this is what you need to do. Let's keep reading. Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away, Jesus said to him. Truly I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times, Peter said to him. Even if, if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said, said the same thing. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, sons of thunder, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face. Now, man, about a year ago, I, I didn't never, I never. So we got the King of Kings, the Son of Man, God's only Son, the Creator of the universe, falls on his face in prayer. If Jesus did it, don't you think we need to do yes. it? Yes. Oh, man. I was like, oh my goodness. I got some more humility to work on, right? My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed. And can you, can you sense with me and just imagine Jesus was in agony. My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, this is what, this is the warning. So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Check it out. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And so, the mention of cup here, I don't think this, this translation mentions cup, but the cup refer reference an Old Testament reference talking about the wrath of God. So what Jesus knew he was going to get, he was going to, 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 to partake 
or have to endure some of God's wrath on our, on our behalf. So he was in intense, intense anguish. He didn't, he didn't want to mess He didn't want to do it. Is there any other way? He says. My father, this cannot pass unless I drink it. Your will be done. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for them the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, sleep and take your rest later on. You can, you can sleep a little later. Now it's time to work. <laughs> See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. So the first thing of how prayer strengthens our faith, prayer helps us to stand in faith against temptation. So I was talking to a couple of strong believers and a while back, I think I shared this analogy before. He, and he gave me this analogy of the dumpster dive, the spiritual dumpster dive. Yeah. And so what happens is when we, when we don't partake of God's food and partake of God's hanging out with being with God's people and spending time in prayer, we actually become hungry. We become so desperate that we begin to do a spiritual dumpster dive into things of this world. Meaning that sometimes we're so hungry in the spiritual that we're willing to eat trash. Through television, through what we listen to, through what we allow to come through our eye gate. But as we spin time in prayer, it will help us stay strong and not have the desire for those things of this world. Matthew 26, 41 says, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. And a lot of us know about the story of David. David, he done a lot of great things, but the Bible said when he was chilling, this is, this is the LTV translation <laughs> when he was chilling back at the palace the normal time when kings went out to fight he was he was hanging out drinking kool-aid and he wasn't ready for the temptation to come and i believe being in battle is a picture of prayer studying our bible and standing strong in faith samuel second samuel 11 1 3, 2 in the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, the springtime, they well, oftentimes armies choose springtime because they can get fruit and other vegetables and things just right off the tree to feed the army. And that's when that's when kings would normally go out, but they said, Oh, I'm good, I'll just send my general out there. One thing that we can't delegate is our, our spiritual prayer life. We can't delegate that. There's other things you can, but not that. This is the next thing that prayer. Prayer helps us to stand in faith to do God's will. Matthew 26, 38 through 30, 39. Then he said to him, my soul is, is very sorrowful. Even to death, remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on the stake and, pray, and prayed saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not as I will, but as I will. As we stay and, and spend time in prayer, it helps us to do God's will. So Ephesians 6 is very interesting scripture here. 18 through 20 it says, praying at all times with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in, in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador change that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So right here, Paul recognizes that his one of his duties 
And one of the things he's called to do is to speak God's word boldly, but he asked for prayer in order to do it. He asked for prayer. Luke 6, 12 through 16, he says, In these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when, and when day came, so Jesus prayed all day, all night, until the morning. And when day came, he called the disciples and chose from them twelve, whom he named apostles. So before he chose his twelve disciples, his twelve apostles, he spent all night in prayer. One more scripture on this, this point. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Check this out. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding and in all your ways, yada. The Greek word for acknowledge, the Hebrew word there for acknowledge is yada. And yada means, it's the same word that was used in, in Adam knew his wife. Yada, spend time, connect with the Lord. And as you do that, you will get the direction that you need. Here's the next point. Actually, let's go back. Let's read this one right here. This is during a time where the, the apostles uh, in the early church, they were being threatened. For truly in this city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus. They're praying. Whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to kill and signs and wonders and perform through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place which were which they were they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So as they prayed, it empowered them to continue to do God's will. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. So what does being filled with the Holy Spirit? Because as when we're a believer, we have the Holy Spirit, right? What does that mean? That means the Holy Spirit has us. That means we surrender. Let's look at this other passage. Ephesians 5, 18, 20. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So what is it saying? Don't be under the influence of anything in this world except the Holy Spirit. We're under the influence. Don't get drunk with wine, but get drunk in the Holy Spirit. Allow yourself to be controlled by Holy Spirit. Be under, basically, be under the influence of Holy Spirit. That we not just have Holy Spirit, but Holy Spirit has us. And that when he says, hey, LT, go over there and talk to that, that young man over there. Tell him about Jesus. What? I'm saying, yes, sir. I'm going to go out there. Filled with the Holy Spirit. And prayer helps us to stay filled with the Holy Spirit. The next point. Prayer helps us to stand in faith by accessing his strength and resources. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. Finally, be strong in the Lord. What does that mean? Ms. Teresa talked about it. So when I am weak, when I realize that I don't have the strength to do anything, when I humble myself, when I spend time in prayer, when I have dependence in God, I'm strong in the Lord. He's strong, He's strong in me. Finally, be strong in the Lord, in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. But I wanted to get to a point here that this is another thing that I believe we forget about, that when we pray, when we pray, angels are sent to help minister to us. You know that? 
I think for some of us, we have angels that are just bored. <laughs> I'm serious. Some of our angels are bored. LT, when are you going to speak God's word so I can act on your behalf? Matthew 4, 11. Then the devil left him, and, 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 and this is after Jesus was tempted. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. So in Ephesians 10, it talks about Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That means we wrestle not against other humans. We don't wrestle against the amount of melanin we have in each other, in our skin. That's what the media would tell us, right? Oh yeah, that, that, that guy, he's got, he's got all that melanin. So that means he hates that person. Oh, he got that less melanin. That means this. What? The Bible says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. What are principalities? It's systems of angels. You know that? It's systems of angels, both good and bad. Ephesians 2 and 2. The prince, check this out. The prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at the work at work in the sons of disobedience. The prince of the power of the air, and that word power is the word for azusia. That means authority, like the badge that an officer would wear. It's talking about Satan. And in Hebrews, I thought this is very interesting. So whoever was writing Hebrews was trying to say, Jesus is better. Jesus is better than Moses. Jesus is better, is better than angels. Jesus is better. Everybody say, Jesus is better. Jesus, Jesus is better. Is better. He better. You got to say it like that. <laughs> Hebrews 1. So in the context of, of the writer saying, Jesus is better than angels, he describes to them how humans relate to angels. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his ministers a flame of fire. But of the sun, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The, the scepter of, of, of brightness is the scepter of, of your kingdom. You have love, righteousness, and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And you, Lord, lay the foundation of the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like a garment, like a robe will roll them up like a garment. They will be changed, but you are the same and your, your years will have no end. Check it out. And to which of the angels has he ever said, set at the right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Here it is. Are they not all ministering spirits sent out to serve for the sake of those who are to inherit salvation? <coughs> Listen to Daniel. Daniel 10, starting verse 2. In those days, I, Daniel, was, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the few three for the full three weeks. And this is where we get the 21 day fast. And behold, a hand touched me. So right after that, Daniel gets a vision of Jesus Christ. And it, it is almost exactly the what's written in Revelation, having the, the gold satchel and all that stuff. But after this vision, this is what happens. And behold, a hand touched me and set set me trembling on my hands and knees. And he said to me, "O oh, Daniel, man greatly loved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For now I have been sent to you." So as he prayed. An angel was dispatched to Daniel. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and humbled yourself before your Lord, your God, your words have been heard, and I have come because of your words. The prince of the kingdom of Persia. The, you see that? The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. But Michael, 
One of the chief princes came to help me, for I was left there with the kings of Persia. So it seemed like this angel, Gabriel, was assigned to the kings of Persia to do something there. But when Daniel started praying, Gabriel was dispatched to him. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> but Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I was left there for with the kings of Persia and came to make you understand. The angel came to make you understand what is to happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision is for days yet to come. But through prayer, not only do we we, we put ourselves in a position to be filled by the Holy Spirit, but angels come to help us. If they help Jesus, don't you know they're going to help us too? So, I want to talk about, this is the acronym, why we don't pray. And I'm about to land a plane. Everybody say, land a plane, LT. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's acronym. All right. The first reason we don't pray, because we like, we want to pray. A lot of, who out there would like to pray more? All of us, we want to pray, but there's things that kind of trip us up. I think the first thing that trips us up is perfectionism. Everybody say perfectionism. perfectionism. Let me describe this really quick. So the guys out there have, have you ever used an electric razor? You ever used an electric razor? Those things work good until they don't. You know, and I, you know, it's like you drop one and then you try to use it and it's like snagging you and biting you like, ah, what's going on? You know, blood, squirt, <laughs> but that's a picture of the fall of creation. We used to be perfect. We used to act, we used to do everything perfectly, but because of the fall, we're not quite perfect. We got a little snag, a little, you know? And perfectionism is when we try to fix things or make things right in our own strength. The, the devil loves perfectionism. You hear me? Perfectionism has killed a lot of people. So I want to give you a uh, Prescription. Everybody say prescription. prescription. All right, here, here's your prescription. I want you to notate every time you say should, could, would. I want you to write it down. Should, should, could, would. You know, the shouldas and the couldas and the wouldas is the language of perfectionism. And, and the devil wants to make prayer so complicated, but it's not complicated. It's just communion. It's just our heart direction towards God. It's just a conversation. Just like when we talk on the phone or talk to our best friend. Say, Lord, how you doing today? I love you, Lord. Could you help me be strong today? Could you help me keep you, keep you on my mind? Prayer is just communicating. And the devil says, oh, look at you. You didn't do it right. You didn't kneel at the right angle. <laughs> <laughs> or oh, your, your voice inflection wasn't quite no God loves our prayers or oh, you wasn't using enough big words in your prayers yeah yeah it's not miraculous <laughs> is it fast is it enough no just simple prayer <laughs> this quote here from Richard Foster he says real prayer comes not from gritting our teeth but from falling in love amen, amen. falling in love and, and here, here's this, it's, it's even in your book, to pray all the time necessitates being in various positions because you will never be in the same position all day. In the Bible, people prayed standing, lifting their hands, sitting, kneeling, looking upward, bowing down, placing their heads between their knees, pounding on their breasts, and facing the temple. Here's the second reason. We don't remember its power. I saw this little phrase here. Prayerlessness equals powerlessness. James 5, 16. 
Confess to one another, therefore, your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind in the heart. The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes man makes tremendous power available. Here's the next one. The absence of habit. Luke 5, 16. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. I like this quote. Oh yeah, let's go, let's go to 1 Peter 2, 21. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you may follow in his steps. I like this quote. Psychologists tell us that that approximately 90% of our daily behavior is based solely on our habits. None of us really decide our future. Instead, we decide our habits and our habits decide our future. But I believe as we begin to take steps, even if it's a small step, it will develop a desire and an appetite for it. You know, I was, I was stationed in, state in, in, in South Korea and they had a thing there called kimchi. And you know, you have the you have the kimchi that was, you know, um that was for the uh, lack of better terms, for the wimps, you know, the cucumber kimchi. Right? You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm not gonna dabble too much. But then you have the hardcore kimchi. I never really touched that stuff. Like, how can they eat that? They developed an appetite because it was habitual. That was part of their culture. Take, start taking steps and make it a part of your culture. You can do it. If, if you, if a thought becomes a feeling, a feeling becomes an action, an action becomes a, a decision, a decision becomes a, a, a behavior, behavior becomes character, character becomes destiny, and destiny becomes our legacy. Did I put habit in there? Did I miss habit? I miss habit. Character after character, it becomes a habit. So we need to work on our habits. This is the last one. Why? Your spiritual stomach is full of things of this world. So if we're already full, we're not going to be hungry for God. So how many like Thanksgiving? Like to eat? What's your favorite thing you like to eat on Thanksgiving? Yeah. Turkey? Green beans and mashed potatoes. Mm, who else? What's your favorite thing, James? Turkey. Turkey. Especially when it's moist. It can't be dry, right? Yes. Like that's not Thank you. You know? But you, can you imagine the first time when you're about to get ready to eat your Thanksgiving meal? You just can't wait. You eat it and just tear it up. But then you're invited to all these other people's places. But you're not as excited anymore because you're already full. And that's a picture of what happens if we fill ourselves with the world, we won't be hungry for God. God wants us to hunger and thirst for Him. Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so I have this video um, that I'm going to show. And it's a picture of grace. We're not going to look at all of it. But it's a, it's a video that talks about the relationship of a father to his son. It's got, it's, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful story. Probably some of you are familiar with it. But that, that, that young man that's in the wheelchair is a picture of all of us. You know that? We're all powerless. We all are impotent. We are all have nothing without God. We need his grace in our lives. And one of the things that, that helps us to partake in that grace that he's given us, the strength for us to finish our race, is through prayer. Is through spending time with the Father. Look what Jesus did. Look what Jesus did. He was in so much agony. He was like, man, this is going to be tough. Facing the wrath of God, this is tough. 
but he fell on his knees and he prayed. That's the answer. Faith is strengthened through prayer. Let's bow our heads.